Apple is expected to be releasing four new iPhones this year, a successor to the iPhone SE, a $550 6.1 inch iPhone, a $900 iPhone 10 successor, and a $1,000 iPhone 10 Plus. The iPhone 10 and 10 Plus don't really need to change much about the design other than to make the knot slightly smaller. Apple should be upgrading the design on the 6.1 inch iPhone. The lowest screen to body ratio that has been released this year in its price category is the Honor 10 with its 79.9% and the iPhone 7 only has a 65% screen to body ratio. The 6.1 inch iPhone may have the screen to body ratio of the iPhone 10 with the knot, although they also may make a phone the size of the iPhone 10 except with a shorter display to get rid of the dots. This would give it a 2 to 1 aspect ratio, 6.1 inch display size, and a screen to body ratio of 79.3%, which is much closer to the Honor 10. All of the phones in this price range that have been released this year have had glass backs, but they have not had wireless charging. The iPhone SE should definitely get a redesign this year. It has a 60.82% screen to body ratio, this is the same screen to body ratio as the iPhone 5S, which was the lowest in its price category in 2013. The new iPhone SE should have similarly sized bezels to the 6.1 inch iPhone, which would give it a lower screen to body ratio at about 75.9%. It could have a 4.7 inch 2 to 1 aspect ratio display, the same height as the iPhone SE, although it would be slightly wider. The new iPhone 10 models should definitely come with OLED display since the previous iPhone 10 came with an OLED display. At the $550 price range, it is split between LCD and OLED. The Vivo X1, Oppo R15, and OnePlus 6 all have OLED displays, but the Zenfone 5Z, Honor 10, and Mi Mix 2S all have LCD. Since a lot of the rumors have been calling this the LCD iPhone, it is definitely going to get LCD. The iPhone SE2 will definitely get an LCD. This year, Apple should upgrade the pixel density of the cheaper iPhone to at least a 400 pixels per inch pixel density. Apple should have at least an f1.8 aperture on each of their phones. This would make it the third year in a row that Apple has used f1.8 on their flagships. There is still the Xperia XZ2 Premium and Huawei P20 Pro flagships which came out this year with f1.8 apertures. They should also still have the 1.22 micron pixels and the 12 megapixel resolution. OIS should be kept on iPhone 10 and the budget iPhone, although it will not be necessary on the iPhone SE2. Since only two phones at that price point, the Meizu 15 and Sharp Aquas S3. Almost all phones in each of these price ranges have dual cameras. The only phones that don't are the Samsung Galaxy S9, a budget phone, the Oppo F7. So all of these phones should come with dual cameras. Apple should update the $550 iPhone to have 4K at 60 frames per second. They should also add 960 frames per second super slow motion to the iPhone 10 line and at least 480 frames per second slow motion on the 6.1 inch iPhone. Apple should offer a 7 megapixel camera on all of their phones this year. The iPhone SE only had a 1.2 megapixel camera. The Apple A12 should obviously be included in the new iPhone 10s. The 6.1 inch iPhone only needs the Apple A11 since that still has a higher single core and multi core score than the Snapdragon. 845 with the new iPhone SE at least upgraded to the Apple A10. Apple has never been known for including large batteries in their phone. The current iPhone 10 has a 2716 mAh battery and that should be good for the new one since the ratio of screen area to battery size is the same as on the LG G7. The 6.1 inch iPhone should have around a 3000 mAh battery. The iPhone 10 Plus should have a 3400 mAh battery. The new iPhone SE should come with at least a 1,800 mAh battery.